All right, guys, I want to continue with uh, this run through of Galatians chapter 3. Uh, so, by faith or by works of the law, verses 1 through 9. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth. That's an interesting phrase. Uh, and I say interesting way too much. I need to expand my vocabulary, right? Um, I'm just going to continue along. This only what I learn of you received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. And so it's obviously uh, by faith. And again, you know, there's the power of the gospel is, you know, it's in the, the Word of God is, um, you know, I forget how he, how he says it in Romans, that, um, you know, basically, the, the gospel is the power uh, of salvation, you know, for those who receive it. And, you know, that's something that Calvinists don't really believe. They reject that. And so, um, you know, again, here he mentions that, you know, that you receive the Spirit by the hearing of faith. Uh, it's obviously a rhetorical question here. It's not by the works of the law. Are ye so foolish? And it's also interesting how he says, This only what I learn of you. Uh, so he's basically just he's saying, You know, I'm asking you. The, the language is very, uh, you know, love it. You gotta love the King James English. Um, Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Obviously not. Uh, have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? And so I'm guessing that he's talking about God here. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you. Speaking of God the Father, or even Jesus. Uh, I don't know. I'm guessing that one. Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Uh, you know, or is he speaking of himself in verse 5? I don't know. But anyways, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And here we see that Abraham was saved by faith. And again, there's the big, uh, you know, the Rachmanites that teach that people are saved by works in the Old Testament. It's completely foolish. But there's verses like this that just refute it contradict their teachings plainly, and uh, it makes no sense whatsoever to even say that anybody was ever saved by works. But Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. It was by faith. Know ye therefore that they which are of, the, of faith are the same children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. And so, he says that they which are of the faith are the same are the children of Abraham. So I guess spiritually, you know, 
that again goes to say that you know all believers in God, the true church, are the true Jews. They are the true descendants of Abraham. Um, and so uh, we're seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. Preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So it's interesting that he said the gospel was preached unto Abraham. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So salvation is by faith alone. So it's talking about you know, justification. And so the righteous shall live by faith, verses ten through fourteen. For as many are of for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. We see the phrase, it is written. That's where I got my YouTube name from, because you see that Paul uses that all the time. It's a reference back to Scripture, to the Old Testament. And uh, For as many as are under the works of the law are under a curse. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. The just shall live by faith. For the just shall live by faith. Which is, I think, a reference to an Old Testament scripture as well. And again, this is a verse, you know, verse 11, that directly refutes any idea that anyone was justified by works. No man is justified by the law in the sight of God. And, you know, the recognized try to say, well, that means today for the church age, all this dispensational nonsense. No. Salvation's always been the same. And uh, so no man is justified, meaning ever, any man, past or future, will be justified by the law and the sight of God. All men are born with a sinful nature. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. It's another verse, you know, that says that, you know, it's impossible to please God with our good works, you know, without faith. Galatians 3.12, the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. The law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. Which is that's really interesting. Seeing that Jesus was made a curse for us. And that's probably where people say that, you know, Jesus took on our sin or, uh, you know, however that said. These are all things I want to look into more. But here's the last section. It's a pretty large one. The Law and Promise, verses 15 through 29. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Hmm. Okay. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not into seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Okay, and this is, you know, some of these verses in here I've went over and looked into a lot, because, you know, these are some of the controversial ones, too, and this is one of those, Galatians 3.16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not 
into seeds, as of many, but as of one, into thy seed, which is Christ. And so he's basically saying that that Old, refer that Old Testament reference was basically speaking of Christ. And... Uh, So this kind of goes into people, you know, dispensational law, thinking that the Jews are God's chosen people and, and all this stuff. And uh, when really uh, everything in the Old Testament was pointing towards Christ and uh, the Jews and all the laws and everything was just kind of like a type of or a shadow of the things to come. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Right, so... You know, I hate to comment on a lot of this when I need to look into it further, but it's like, in this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God and Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul. So it's talking about the promise was, you know, in Jesus, and that justification is by faith, and, um, and like, basically that the law came after that and um, so the law doesn't override that and uh, well if the inheritance be of the law it is of no more promise but God gave it to Abraham by promise this is again kind of one of those verses that refutes the idea that anyone was ever saved by works. He's saying, if the inheritance be of the law, then it is no more of promise. Because you would be earning it if you were trying to live by the works of the law. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Okay. So it all had to do with Abraham's faith in God. Wherefore, this, wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. And so some people would ask, I guess, what was the purpose of the Old Testament law? And it kind of says here, in short, it was added because of transgressions. What was the purpose of law in the Old Testament? Was it for people's salvation? <laughs> no. It was added because of transgressions. There we go. There's your answer. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Hmm. That sounds like a puzzle or something, trying to read that and understand it. So that's just a tiny verse and I let it get dissect. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one. And it's been a while since I've even looked over these and thought about it, so I have to look into it more. Hmm. Is the law then against the promises of God? Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. And he's, again, he's saying righteousness was not by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. 
we see, you know, that we're all born with a sinful nature. You know, all men are sinners. Um, you're born sinners. You know, because of our nature, but also because of our acts. So there's two ways there. But before faith came, we were kept under the law and shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. And I've talked about this before, and this is this goes on the same thing with the dispensational salvation thing. They'll say, well, see, before faith came, and they're trying to say that, see, salvation by faith didn't come yet. But that's not what this means. Okay, so it's more of before the revelation of uh, you know, justification by faith came. It's always been there. But that's, you know, when the gospel was preached uh, before then, you know, before Jesus came. Uh, so we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And I could see somebody using that for some kind of baptismal salvation verse, but that's not what's being said there either. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed, the heirs according to the promise. And so there you go. All believers are the true Jews. They are Abraham's seed. And there is no more Jew or Greek in Christ. It's, you know, we're all one body of believers. We are all, uh, you know, God's chosen people. Those of us who are saved. So this is a pretty deep chapter that really takes a lot more looking at everything. And I've already went over a lot of this, and I've studied a lot of it in the past, but I need a refresher. And uh, so that's, you know, that's something I definitely look forward to going through a uh, expository on this so uh, you know I'll have a good reference to go back to but sorry I don't think that I added a whole lot to that one but read through it anyways so continue through Galatians God bless